Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory. I'm a Brother Sews Ambassador and I'm so excited to be here with you today to show you another fun sewing project. This one can be simplified down to a very basic sewing project. So if you're a beginner and you have an older child or a teenager who wants to start sewing, this might be a really fun project to introduce them to. Plus, it's a Christmas project and there's nothing better than Christmas sewing. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a simple Christmas stocking. It's made with a free sewing pattern, which is another bonus. You can download it on lifesosavory.com, but all the directions for putting it together will be here in this video on the Brother Sews blog. So let's get started. Download your template from lifesosavory.com and then come back here for all the directions. Now, I'm first gonna walk you through sewing the basic stocking, and here's what it looks like. We have a cute fold over cuff on top, a stocking shape, and a little hanger that goes with it. Once you master this, I have three fun embellishments for you to try. So let me show them to you before we walk through even the basic so you can decide which version you wanna make. In addition to making the simple project here, the basic stocking, you can level up about one level by adding this faux fur top. Look at how cute this is. So the cuff that's folded over is made of faux fur. We have another fun Christmas design here on our fabric and a little hanger. Faux fur embellishment is stocking project number two. You wanna add a little more design and pizzazz? I found that adding Christmas embroidery was just a gorgeous way to add to this stocking design. So I embroidered Merry and Bright here with fun glitter thread onto my stocking before I sewed it together. And I'm gonna show you how to make this version as well. The possibilities are really endless. These are just three ideas that I came up with in addition to the basic stocking, but you could use these to inspire you to create so many different stocking designs. But this last one that I have for you is really fun, and that's we have a pom-pom trim along the fold over cuff. So I just think this is really cute. Again, gorgeous Christmas fabric, and I'll show you how to sew the pom-pom trim into the top of this stocking as you're creating it so that when you finish, you just have an adorable pom-pom stocking to go with. All right, this is what we're gonna make today, and I'm excited to get started, so let's dive in. a strip that we can use to create the hanger later on. So we'll fold that and then do it later. Okay, so now we have two of each and we're gonna wanna go ahead and turn them right side out like this and then we'll put the right sides together because we're gonna begin by stitching each of them to each other. So the lining to the lining and the outer to the outer. I'm gonna sew with a narrow 1 4th inch seam allowance around the outside curved edge of my stocking. We're not gonna sew the top. But we'll give a nice top stitch. And we're gonna sew around. If you don't feel comfortable sewing these two layers of fabric together without pinning or clipping, you can go ahead and do that um, to make sure that they stay together as you're sewing around your project. But this stocking can be made um, in a very basic form, so it's great for beginner sewers or even um, you know older kids who wanna tackle a sewing project or make something for someone else. This is a great place to start. And on some of these more extreme curves, you can see I'm lifting my presser foot and pivoting a little bit to avoid um, wrinkles and creases and just help the fabric flow through there a little bit better. If it's a more gradual curve, you can usually move the fabric as you're sewing, but occasionally I will lift and pivot the foot 
just to help with that process. This is also a pattern that would be easy to adjust the size. So if you sew one and decide, you know, this really isn't um, the size stocking I would like, then you can go ahead and, you know, enlarge it or reduce it to make it a better size for you. And I'm just going to demonstrate on this one how easy it would be if you wanted to put a few pins in there to keep everything together as well, if that's better for you. around the edges. So any place that there is a curve, I would suggest taking some little sewing scissors and go ahead and clip those curves. So it's pretty much the entire bottom boot or foot area of the stocking. The top is straight, so you can go ahead and not clip that if you want, but you're going to be clipping the rest of it. Let's turn this right side out and use your fingers to fully press the seams out. Then we'll take our iron And if you get to some places where you feel like it really isn't fully pushing that out, you can go back in and press it again. We need to put them right sides together. So I'm going to flip this one inside out again. And then we're gonna tuck the gingerbread inside. Okay, so um, this works for all the versions except for the pom-pom one, and that one we will want to actually leave a hole in the lining for turning somewhere else and not along the top because we want to sew the pom-poms when we sew the top. So that would be the only thing. If you were putting um, a pom-pom or something along this edge, you'd want to make sure that you left an opening here in the lining and then we would close that later. But right now we're going to leave a little opening here in the top as we're sewing and then we'll be able to turn our stocking through that opening. Again, we're just using a fairly narrow seam allowance, whatever you're comfortable sewing. And we are stitching around the top of this stocking. Okay, and leave a few inch opening for turning. And while I have the machine right here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, create the um, hanging. So you can do that now or later, but since we are kind of in the stage here, we'll just get it done and then we'll be able to move on. Um, so I'm gonna create sort of my own bias to make the hanging bias tape. So I'll first fold it in half, and then we will fold in half again.
If you have a bias tape maker, a wide one, you could definitely use that at this point. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of folding in both outer edges so then we can fold those in, press and sew. Just to create a little hanger. All right, so let's stitch that and then we'll have all the pieces we need to finish our basic stocking. So I'm making sure that I'm sewing all the layers together as I'm stitching here. And then this will fully enclose and we'll have a binding that we can also use as a hanger. So mine is eight inches long, uh, six would also work. I'll probably end up trimming this, um, but you can start with a little bit longer piece if you want. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this right side out so we have the opening that we left here at the top. And we're going to pull the stocking through until we can see the right sides of both fabrics. Okay, and then depending on which one you want to be your outer and which one you want to be your inner, this is where you now will decide and push the lining down into the main stocking. This is where you really want your toes to line up so that it can actually go inside there. And then what you're going to do is we're uh, going to top stitch around the top of the stocking to um, give it a little definition as well as to close this opening that we left here. So with pins or clips, you will want to um, adjust the stocking so that it's laying nicely across the top. Right here you can see that this outer is sticking out way farther um, than the lining. So that's where we want to kind of pull and adjust to make sure that the layers of fabric are even at this point. Okay, and then we'll top stitch around the top close to the edge. I do it really um, kind of as close as I'm comfortable um, sewing. Let's try this again. So now we're going to top stitch around probably only about an eighth inch, inch seam allowance. We really do want to stitch as close as we can to the top of the fabric. You can use a matching thread, you can use a coordinating thread, you can use a statement thread. Um, it's really up to you if you want this to be seen or you want it to blend in. You could also use a decorative stitch if your machine has some fun stitches. If you were doing that, I would recommend sewing on the lining side because actually when we flip it over, the lining side is what we'll see. So if you were going to add a stitch that you really wanted to be seen, you would want to make sure that you sew it on the side that will be right side out. And again, this is just the basic pattern, the basic stocking. We're going to be adding embellishments and doing several more um, options along the way, but this will show us how the basic one looks. All right. So let's take a look here. So now you get to kind of reveal the fun fold over and you can really adjust this to be as much or as little as you want. But doesn't that just make it so cute when you fold it over like that? I love um, the way that looks and the way you can play with fabrics and um, different coordinations here. So this is where we will put our stocking holder and actually use it to um, sew this crease. So you don't have to do this, but I like to just stitch it on. And then, and it's also fun to use the same fabric as you did on the outer for the hanger to kind of coordinate with that. So put it on the outside side seam. And I just have the two edges here on the inside. And then this one, you will want to make sure you're using a thread that you can't really see on this outside because we are going to zigzag this hanger on 
to keep it in place and secure that fold over of the fabric. This also will kind of finish that raw edge. You could also pre-finish the raw edge if you wanted to as well. But here we go, our basic stocking is completed. You can mass produce them or you can check out the um, variations that I'm gonna show you here in a minute for making more fun stocking options. Okay, let's talk about making a stocking with a faux fur fold over lining. So I have this um, Sherpa gold glitter fabric that I made a jacket out of, and I'm actually not even gonna use that gold glitter part, although that would be pretty too. I just wanna use the faux fur um, to make the fold over. So I cut the lining fabric and I left, when I folded it, and cut it, I added a little seam allowance here to the top, but now what we need to do is we need to cut this part two sides from our fur. So we'll go ahead and lay it on here, and I think I can get them both out of this one. This is folded over, but I'm actually not going to want to leave it folded over, so maybe um, I'll do this, and then I can use that line. So remember to add a seam allowance. So I'm going to raise my line up a little bit. And I don't know if I can cut with this, maybe. Okay. I'm just going to hold it because I'm not sure about the magnets. Alright. So there's our two faux fur tops. And it's a little bit longer than I want to fold over. But I want to ha have it so we can make sure that we can um, see that fold later. So what I will do is with right sides together, so I want the um, fur to show, not the gold, I'm going to pin it to this lining piece or clip it. And then before you sew the pattern together or the stocking together like we did before, we'll sew this fur and don't ingest too much of it. Sew this fur to the top part of the lining and then assemble the stocking as we did before. And I'll go ahead and show you when we get to the last part how it will all look. But once we sew, we're gonna go ahead and stitch these two layers together. And then when we lift this up and take a look, we can see how this faux fur is on top of the stocking. And so on this lining part, when we fold it over, we'll have that cute overlap on the outside of our stocking. Okay, so now we're gonna take the next step in our fur topped fold over stocking. We have the outer and the lining. You may notice they don't match at all, but it doesn't matter because um, you won't see this gingerbread fabric at all. You'll only see the fur um, fold over. So, and unless you're like peeking down into the stocking. So the one thing we wanna make sure of when we're doing this fur is that just like the pom-pom, we've left an opening on the side to turn so we don't have to top stitch around our fur. I think that would be a little um, tricky and difficult. So I've left this opening here and we will close that um, right before we finish the stocking. And the other thing is we want to make sure when we sew around the top that we still have access to um, this opening right here, okay? Because we need to be able to turn that. So we're going to put the stockings right side together. And in order to do that, I'm going to turn this lining piece right side out, or wrong side out, excuse me. And we're going to put the right side of the stocking inside of that because this is our access for turning, and um, so we need that facing out. And then again, you're gonna line up your side seams, just like you we did on the basic stocking. So I like to make sure that I'm line, again, check that your right sides are together, and then you're gonna pin or clip around. 
I like to do the two side seams first so, so that if there's any discrepancies between the width around here, that we're able to just sort of ease it in. on the outside part here. Now, here's the tricky thing. I don't really want to see this sewn through my fur, okay? So for this one, I'm actually going to open it up and stitch it, and the stitching will be here on the side seam, but will fold over and you won't see it. Okay, so let me grab a pin to pin this in place so that as I maneuver the rest of this through my machine, it's a little bit tricky because that faux fur adds, you know, some thickness that the other fabric doesn't. Okay, so I'm going to go back on that side seam. We're going to sew right in there with our zigzag, stitch that hanger right on. So this is a little bit different hanging technique, but it'll just give you another option. Pull the pin out, maneuver our fabric back out, and then we can go ahead and fold it over again. And now our hanger is hung in place, and we also have covered the stitches with the faux fur on the side. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and hoop our fabric to create the embroidered design option. I'm going to put the fabric in upside down so that when we turn the cuff over, it will actually be right side up. And squish it in there. Make sure your fabric is squared away pretty well. Okay, we have um, our hoop set in our machine. We're going to embroider the words Merry and Bright on here and we just go ahead and lower the presser foot and get ready to embroider. Okay, let's talk about using that embroidery now to create the stocking. So I'm going to cut out two uh, lining pieces from this tree fabric using my template. And here's our Marion Bright. It's actually upside down right now, but we will be turning that lining over when we do the fold. And that should be right side up. So I've tried to center it, leave a little bit above so that um, we can sew that top. And then we'll go ahead and cut that fabric out and we'll check out how it looks on the stock. Okay, so now we are doing our embroidered top stocking, and so you can see I just finished sewing around the top of my two stockings, and here's my upside down embroidery, and here's my turning hole. So I'm going to turn this right side out to finish this stocking. If we turn, oh my goodness, that's so cute. Look at the glitter thread on there. And it just looks, that turned out great. Better than I even anticipated. So I might need a whole set of cute embroidered stocking. You could do names, you know, all kinds of ideas that you could put in there. So then we're gonna take our hanger once again, fold it in half place it on the side seam, right in there. 
Once again, we have a different color here, so I don't want to go ahead and if I top stitch, we'll see it on the red. So just like when we did on the fur one, we're going to open that up and top stitch before we fold it. So I would only sew with it folded over if your thread and your fabric are all coordinating because we didn't really see it on my red when my red cuff folded over because we had red thread and red fabric. Okay, so we're working in there. Let me pull it back out. Remove the pin. Clip any remaining little threads. And then we can just go ahead and fold it back over. And there we have a really cute hanger on an embroidered stocking with coordinating fabric and just a super adorable Christmas stocking option. So there's another great embellished option for your stocking. Okay, we're now working on the stocking that we're going to put pom-pom trim around that top fold so that when we fold it over, the pom-pom trim is hanging down. So cute, right? But what we need to do is not have our turning opening in the top, like we talked about, we need to have it on the side. So when you're sewing the lining, the lining for your pom-pom stocking, you're going to want to leave an opening here on the straight side. So I just backstitched and stopped. I'm going to cut my thread. I'm going to move ahead a few inches. And then I'm going to resume sewing around the rest of the lining. And that will give you that turning hole that you need since we're going to be sewing all the way around the top of the stocking in a moment. All right, so we are now going to put the pom-pom trim around the top of this stocking. So. Um, like I mentioned before, we left an opening in the lining for turning and you want to make sure that is on the outside when you put your two stockings together. So my outer fabric is inside with right sides together and here's my lining fabric with the turning hole. So now we're going to try and um, pin or clip around the top but also including the pom-poms. So I'm going to line up the side seams and in my clipping around here, I'm also going to be putting, tucking these pom-poms in. And you can see that I have more pom-poms than I need. So when we get back around, we will trim those. But when we stitch, we want to be stitching a little bit on this pom-pom facing as well as putting our two layers of fabric together. So this one is definitely going to be a little bit trickier to sew. And I'm going to overlap the pom-poms here and then cut off the excess. and clip it in place. I feel like I need a million clips here to hold it all, but we'll try and sew slow and keep it organized as we go. So here's our pom-pom is enclosed in these two layers and then make sure that your turning hole is exposed before you sew or you won't be able to turn it right side out. All right, so I'm gonna change, like I mentioned, to a zipper foot. So this hopefully will just give us a little bit more room to sew without getting in the way of those pom-poms because if you hit one of those with your foot, it's gonna bounce things all over. So I've got the um, side of the foot that doesn't have the plate on it towards my stocking. And then as you're sewing, we want to make sure that we're not only sewing the fabric together, but we're also sewing on that facing layer of the pom-pom, which is in there, and I can also feel it with my finger.
Okay, so now we have our really cute pom-poms up here on top. And I think I am gonna top stitch around there just to reinforce and hold those all in place before we fold it over. I think that will look nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my other sewing foot. And then, can we slide the <laughs> pom-poms under here? All right, so remove that from your machine, and then we can go ahead and turn over our top edge to see our adorable little pom-pom trim. Again, another super cute little embellishment on this very simple pattern to begin with. Let's sew our hanger on here. Now this one, we've got the same color thread and fabric and all that good stuff. So we are simply going to fold it over and put it on. And then um, even with the automatic thread cutter, you know, there are sometimes these little threads that you want to go back and trim. But there you go. You can see a really cute pom-pom trimmed Christmas stocking that would make a great gift or decoration in your home.